Jason Bennett. Welcome to Show Studio. Hello. You have a really interesting relationship with Lee McQueen as a man in the house of Alexander McQueen because obviously you worked with Lee himself on the shows for a really, really long time, but also you're heavily, heavily involved with Savage Beauty in that you've designed the exhibition. So really amazing collaborative relationship there. I want to start, though, not talking about Savage Beauty, talking about the early years, because you worked together. The first show you did was number 13, wasn't it, which was Spring Summer 99, the robot spray. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about that show, because what I want to start with, because I think it's a show that everyone adores and everyone talks about constantly. It's kind of a, a McQueen favourite for everyone. Yeah, well, the reason I got involved was I knew the, the cameraman, mm. or the lighting fellow called Steve Chivers, who lit a lot of the early shows. And Lee was looking for somebody to design the show, so he and I did a lot of films and mm. stuff. So, and I'd worked with Steve on a couple of things, and he said, "Oh, you know, we've got doing this thing with Alexander McQueen. Come and meet him." And anyway, so I went to meet him, and and basically, and, and I knew Katie England and Sam yeah. Gainsbury from working with them on kind of music videos and stuff like that. So I kind of had a little history with that gang, and so I then went and met him, and then just got involved with just drawing up you know, bits and pieces and mm. just help getting involved with the the robot show. And again, yeah, that was, an, you know, and it was a bit like, well, this is an interesting. First. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I hadn't really worked in fashion in that sense, yeah. per se. So it, for me, coming from a different background, like yeah. music videos and but films maybe that worked and stuff well, like because that. Because as an installation, it, was, it wasn't a fashion, you know, the robot spray yeah. painting, it was quite... Yeah, well, I think maybe that's what part, partly made it inter certainly made it interesting for me because it's a different yeah. kind of arena, um, and it was also live. That was the thing because obviously, if you do it for a film, yeah, if the robot doesn't spray, it doesn't matter. You kind of cut the film and yeah. you do it again. Whereas this is live action, and if it didn't work, and there wasn't yeah. owed loads of money for it, so yeah. you know. And I remember we got these robots. We got some company called Komao up in sort of. Lincolnshire or something to provide mm. these car spraying robots and then a fuse went in the middle of the afternoon and we had to bike down a new fuse which only got there by about f two hours oh before God. the show yeah. and the guy from the from the thing was this guy had come down with a robot who'd done this sort of product placement thing is going oh I don't know I hope it works I didn't put my you know yeah. some <laughs> trip switch went you know and something went horribly wrong oh, and no. so you're sort of aware of all yeah. this stuff and Lee isn't and you're thinking oh my god this could this could be so embarrassing you yeah know. if it just didn't spray yeah but then you know then we get the robots you do a little test and then Lee was talking about this dancing mm. thing and yeah I mean we tested it but not extensively yeah. and it was pretty see to your pants yeah and that's what's <laughs> you know and that's what's great about it and it was referencing rebecca horn you know with the pipes yeah, and tubes the and blood, yeah. yeah so it was sort of ad hoc um you know car and, and you know the end result is kind of you know amazing mm. so um yeah so then i did and then i did all these shows since then mm. basically so talk to me about Good first up. meeting him because when you first went and chatted to him, was it was it almost quite sort of okay? We need someone for the show. We need to yeah, yeah. Here. To yeah. be honest, it was a bit like that, and it wasn't. Do yeah. you think? Oh well, I'm going to be doing this for ages, and developing a relationship about it. It was very much like, oh, this would be he's a really interesting person to work with, mm. and that's what I do. I do sets and design, mm. you know, physical spaces mm. and things like that. So that's how you know that's you know how I sort of interpreted it as well. Mm. But you know, actually, you know, you then realise you're working with a very special person and it yeah. was really interesting you know it was a very interesting and it wasn't like I exclusively did I didn't do loads of fashion I did carried on doing yeah. loads of film stuff and just ended up always doing the shows pretty much because hmm? I was just gonna say do you think that's why it works well because I always feel like his shows they were kind of beyond fashion you know that I think maybe yeah I think a yeah. lot of the people involved were not strictly fashion people so yeah. perhaps in the way that Lee wasn't his shows weren't you know his he didn't feel restricted. He didn't yeah. seem to restrict himself with just doing classic fashion shows. He hated doing that. So he yeah. wanted to do something that was more close to art, really, in a more spectacular fashion. He, yeah, they were indefinitely turned into something mm. beyond just the show. And yeah. so, yeah, quite, I think they were, they were, they were unusual because they, they weren't just doing, OK, we've got to show the clothes off. They were mm. unquestionably something more than that for him. And I think, yes, yeah, surrounding himself perhaps with people who weren't from that discipline, mm. maybe, you know, yeah, that's probably right, actually. I'm sure that was something he probably liked because it wasn't, we didn't bring our own fashion baggage because yeah, I had okay. none, you yeah. know, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. I didn't really 
So. And how would he pitch a collection to you, like from that first one right through? You know, so when you started talking to him, was he like, right, I've got this idea. It's a Rebecca Horn reference. I need two robots spraying shalom on a plinth. Or was it a bit more loose than that, where he was like, this is what I want to suggest. What can you do? Or I guess maybe that changed as the relationship it, developed. Well, it does, but also he would always develop an idea, what was good about, and I think it's the way that even when he was always backstage adding stuff, mm. you know, he was always, it seemed to me, and I, you know, I don't know, but that he was always trying to, everything was refining, refining, mm. trying to make it better and more interesting, there'd be new ideas sparking off, but certainly with the shows, there were, um, there'd be a core idea and then suddenly it would change, it would morph into something. And so for example with that, I think you know, the Rebecca Horn was the original thing. Then it was like, oh, wouldn't robots be good? Mm. Then oh, maybe we'd do two robots. And then, oh, what can the robot do? So mm. then you get the programming guy because, oh, we can do this. And he mm. goes, but then Lee would go, oh, yeah, actually, wouldn't it be more like Sylvie Graham, like the dance of the swans or something like that? And turn, mm. Do you see what I mean? So yeah, he would, develop. yeah, he would develop. Um, so what you do and so I would illustrate you know as we're going to to help to help everybody formulate how the thing might end up looking mm. and he would yeah he would always just he enjoyed it I think he really enjoyed the process mm. of developing you know because obviously you don't quite know what the robot's going to do but he sort of obviously had this idea that it was a snake it was this mm. you know spawn it was this evil you know. <laughs> um, and actually you know it became you know he became more and more kind of he loved things like robots and and the kind of mechanics of, of yeah it was just you know it was interesting mm. and he would always try and turn it into something else that was what's was good so it yeah. just so it, it, quite often you never quite knew what it would end up like yeah until did he it actually quite like happened. that did he almost like that you know maybe they just wouldn't have sprayed the paint you know that kind of element of not drama, well obviously it had to like, spray the paint but but you know what something like, might something not could I mean go wrong. I don't know I think he just maybe had the confidence that. Everybody would sort of panic enough and make sure it didn't. I don't yeah. know. Because I was reading an interview with Sam Gainsbury where she was talking about those amazing armadillo shoes from the Plato's yeah. Atlantis collection. And she said that she'd kind of put them on backstage and gone and, and she couldn't walk in them. And she, she went up to him and yeah. she was like, Lee, I can walk in any pair of heels and I can't walk in these. They're all going to fall over. And he was like, well, if the girls fall, they fall. Yeah. And it got me thinking. I wondered if he kind of liked... Because a lot of the, the theatre of his shows, it does. You look at it and you think, God, that so easily could have gone wrong. You know, ice skating, models dancing. Totally. Yeah. A million percent, yeah, hundred, absolutely. They were always like that. And I think, uh, yeah, I just don't think he sort of cared. I mean, I don't think he didn't care. He just sort of thought that's kind of irrelevant Yeah. in a way. If something goes wrong, well, you know what? It goes wrong. Mm. But actually, what I want is these ice skating people in this mm. box with a snowstorm. And um, do you know what? And then people go, oh, you know, you can't do, you know. Uh, uh, that's, that's exactly right. Mm. And... Um, you know, that was what was kind of exciting, I suppose, about it. Because quite, yeah, and he'd always go, you've got to always worry about the models. Oh, it's too slippery. Yeah. I don't care, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. They'll be fine. Yeah. They'll Did be anything fine. And if they're not, wrong? if they die, they die. <laughs> you know? It must be quite scary for you, kind of being like, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did it ever kind of mess up? Did not really. Like, I mean, That's amazing. No, not, I mean, you know, I can't remember. I'm sure there was an old one with stumble, the old stumble and stuff. Yeah. They're pretty, like... I mean, you know, well, there were a couple of ones which we weren't that happy with. Okay. You know. And, the, um, and what was the what was the reason for that? Just technical things didn't. Allow yeah, there were yeah. a couple of ones where technically didn't quite do what it was supposed to do. Which ones? <laughs> Dare I say? <laughs> there were ones like we called it the Wall of Mist. There was a Wall <laughs> of Mist show, which is kind of a nice idea. We had this great director called Wiz collaborator to do this film, and he'd written this film based on the story of the Eye, and it was mm. all terribly sexual and and we were going to project it onto a wool of dry ice that yeah. you could project onto it and then the models can walk through the screen that's that yeah. was a kind of a essential idea which is a really nice one yeah. but um and then kind of what happened although somebody opened the door and the thing didn't work quite and mm. and in fact we'd engage interestingly we'd engage some film special effect people mm. who were really good yeah but you know, because they're sort of used to non-live action yeah. stuff, they were slightly more relaxed Didn't about... quite get the pace, yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, there was always like, well, maybe we'll do it. It wasn't that, but there was a kind of ethic yeah. that, oh, well, you know... It, it, Anyway, it didn't quite work. You go, oh, it's a wall of piss. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> I like your impressions of Lee because what were your experience of working with him as, as a man? Because you kind of, it seems like you did get him in those moments where he probably was a bit, you know, 
people talk about how kind of visceral he was backstage and quite ferocious. And was he quite like that to you? You know, quite very energetic. I just love your impression of him. He's like, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was just really um, funny in that yeah. sense, and he kind of would also just, yeah. And he just, you know, he'd sort of go. He, he would turn the head of a pin. That was what was great about him. He, yeah. He'd have an idea and we'd go, oh, we can't really afford this. It doesn't really work. And he'd go, nah, actually, ah, fuck it. <laughs> and he'd get this, chuck that away and he'd get a blank sheet of A4 paper and go, right, okay, what about this? Yeah. You know, because there were quite a lot of ideas that he had that we didn't realise that sort of, I would then go and draw up a bit and sketch and he didn't work. It was too conventional for him. Quite often yeah. you do drawings that are a bit too conventional. He'd That's go, interesting. You know, he'd go, or, or the collection changed and it would suddenly be less relevant to him. Yeah. Because he was very concerned that it meant something to him yeah. in some way or something to the collection or it had some relevance to him, you know, like the Salem Witches one and yeah. things like that. And nobody really liked that show, but I quite liked it, but nobody else did. Um, <laughs> I think it was a lot to do with the venue and the fact it was pissing and rain that night. But, mm. um, you know, he got very intensely into, he'd just been to find out some, you know, talking about his relations. And, mm. you know, he'd kind of got very involved in directing his little film and all the rest of it. And uh, so, um, yeah, he was always, he was very concerned that it meant something. So yeah. he'd quite often go, no, but it doesn't mean anything, you know, yeah. it, uh, to him, I guess. And, that must be quite strange for someone like you though, to, you know, as you said, given the background you'd come from, to try and work in a way that was much more about emotion and. No, but I think no, yeah. but I think you know you do. I mean, in films and things, you know, it's got a, everything has to have a narrative and a meaning yeah. somewhere. It does because otherwise it is just fluff. Yeah. And I think that was what I think that's what was attractive to him also as kind of an artist. You know, he he wasn't interested in just fluff it wasn't just a decorative background was yeah. that the last thing on earth he and it wanted it wasn't spectacle for spectacle's sake no not really no it wasn't it wasn't just oh let's do something flash it yeah. wasn't it was something no absolutely that's right it kind of meant something mm. and it meant something to him mm. and i think i think that's actually quite crucial in the understanding of, of why it worked i mean you know, obviously it's a bit of spectacle to yeah. it he's showman and all the rest of it. But, you know, like the, the last show, you know, the one that Nick did the film Plates for. Atlantis. Yeah, Pl Atlantis. And, you know, it was very much about his evolution, how he's, he interpreted, you know, how fashion go working and, mm. you know. Um, and also, you know, we were having those cameras, these motion control cameras that were going to scan the audience. Mm. He was always into kind of... Involving the audience. Yeah, yeah, and we did quite a bit. But at one point, we sort of, we, we did oh. investigate sorts of things like using the motion control cameras and we thought maybe we might do things like you could have actually filmed with a motion motion control camera can repeat the move you can move mm. the camera and you can move and then put the camera somewhere else we thought at one point we'd do one model you know and do a kind of x-ray of her mm. so you could have her walking Amazing. and then have that on the film so as the film scanning it suddenly could you know you could see yeah you know um so we investigated doing that, but that was kind of too complicated. But, you know, he was very interested in the kind of exploring, yeah, you know. Pushing things forward. Yeah, oh, God, yeah. yeah. You know, and that was what was interesting. I want to go back to that thing you mentioned about kind of involving the audience, because one of the things, you know, it's a show that everyone loves, which is the Voss show and that mirrored box. Yeah. And people always talk about how he made the audience kind of look at yeah. themselves. And Nick, Nick was talking about it the other day, because Nick loves it. It's one of mm. his favourite shows. And he said, I can't work out if that was intentional. Was that intentional? Did he say, I want them to all sit there and have to stare at themselves? No, that one, that, I mean... He, he he always liked that kind of, he sort of kind of hated the audience. I mean, it wasn't hated the audience. It was a sort of love-hate relationship, yeah. I think, with, you know, I guess as an artist, you know, he was sort of, it's not about, it was about how he felt about yeah. it. Not yeah. necessarily, I mean, I mean, he's way more complex than that. Yeah. And I couldn't begin to sort of, you know, delve into yeah. why and the wherefore of what, whatever. But, you know, in the end, you know, I think most artists, really true artists, you know, concern themselves mm. with how they feel about it, not how an audience views it you know you yeah. had to be strong enough so i think he always had this there was a slight sort of hatred of the yeah. fact that he had to cater for this front row and, and he had to pander to it in yeah. a way you know so he want, sometimes wanted to sort of you know go well if it's uncomfortable then i don't care you yeah. know it wasn't like make it warm it was like yeah. no don't care about yeah. that you know it's actually you know i want them to see my work and yeah so that one came about you know, he wanted to do a, a padded cell kind of thing and mm. You know, in discussion, we thought, well, maybe it would be quite good if we use a padded cell that's totally enclosed, because mm. obviously a padded cell is something that's enclosed. Mm. So maybe then you, you use two-way mirror, mm. um, 
and then he was and then he would sort of at that point he'd go yeah two way mirror you know, you know and then you go yeah that's a really that would be that would work because then you can then the audience so then you really push that aspect so yeah. the outside of the box so when you come in you see this steel box with a a mirror in it. Mm. and in fact you are looking at so you're looking at yourself which is always mm. kind of horrible when you're in a yeah. well you know when you're in a restaurant and stuff yeah. I don't like it maybe some people do but <laughs> um, but yeah so there was this thing and then suddenly boom, the show comes on but then it also and the way the two-way mirror works you know you then end up with this really interesting multiple reflection thing mm. so the show is in but there's a separation also between the audience and the mm. and the models and the show itself and then, of course, you know, that wasn't enough. He then wanted another box with inside it, yeah. which had, you know... Michelle Ollie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Michelle Ollie and loads of moths. Yeah. And, you know, a giant light bulb and the whole thing. So, yeah, you know, he'd always <laughs> embellish it and make it... Did he? Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, well, it was great because then you sort of... Um, yeah, you make something good really good. And it's interesting on that one, you know, the one of those sheets of glass didn't yeah. come down quite at the same time as the other. They were supposed yeah. to come down simultaneously. Yeah. And one was a little bit delayed. Luckily it came down, but at one point I was thinking, oh God, it's not going to come down at yeah. all. But do you kind of love that about it? Cause it not kind of, really, but I mean, no. I don't mind because yeah. it's like, it's real. Yeah, you know? exactly. It kind of keeps, it's interesting when we talk about that live element to the shows. Yeah. And kind of the fact that it is always a knife edge between it going right and it going wrong. And I yeah. think that's quite interesting with the... And I think just for me as well, it's also because there comes a point at about six o'clock when you actually can't do anything. Yeah, you just... Like, you just literally have to sort of go doing. to the back of the thing and just kind of watch it happen yeah. and, you know... Did you watch them from where the audience were? N well, normally you kind of would be sort of doing stuff. So you would tend to go up the back where the yeah. thing will find some sort of... I've actually got some, I've got amazing photographs of loads of the shows you? because, yeah, because I sort of usually went to funny positions and took oh, wow. pictures that nobody's ever seen. You should do something with those. Oh, I don't know, yeah, but, yeah, one day. No, but so I've put, you know, so I'd often find a kind of good vantage because there really yeah. wasn't anything I do. I can't run on and get a paper cup, yeah. you know, so you just would find somewhere good to tuck yourself good and stuff. watch it really. Good vantage point. Do you have any, it's kind of, a, it's an obvious question, but do you have any favourites? Were there any that you were particularly proud of or particularly kind of? Because mu you must have felt like it pushed you forward as, as a kind of creative person. Were there any that you came away from and you really, you just loved? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that Voss show was amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, loads of them incredible. But I think what was interesting for me was that you do all that, the, that aspect, you know, the mm. set aspect, which I've get involved with. But, you know, and you'd actually watch a show and you'd been backstage, you'd seen Lee's clothes, you'd seen the mm. collection, sort of vaguely hanging on racks and mm. things. Then you'd actually see it come out with, you know, the incredible hair mm. and the styling and the, and you'd just go, I mean, genuinely. You'd see it again. Genuinely. Well, no, he hadn't, hadn't seen it, you yeah. see. You'd do a rehearsal with the models, just maybe with a bit of, you know, yeah. half done. Yeah. And they'd do a rehearsal and stuff like that, whenever in the afternoon. But you know, you first time you actually see all the clothes in the collection with the makeup yeah. and the hair, you know, and you know, so that was what was also really incredible for yeah. me because I hadn't seen everything all together. Yeah. And at that point you're like, wow, that's incredible. Did you always understand that's it? That's incredible. At that point? Because I guess since you yeah, say you can quite get into yeah. it. Yeah, Some, yeah, sometimes. I mean, you know, one shows I really like were things like that wind tunnel show we did. You yeah. know, that was really good, amazing. Yeah. You know, with the girl with the dress and mm. that was incredible. Um, spectacular show and I mean we were obsessed about the backdrop but actually it was the wind tunnel itself that was amazing and then we kind of had the tundra with rubber <laughs> rocks on it which is great um, but then you know then you they have these incredible pieces yeah. in the show mm. which you hadn't seen them wearing until, until you see yeah you see the whole show together because we do, quite often you couldn't really do it too many times because you're blowing snow around, yeah. like in that snow box thing. And you couldn't yeah. really start blowing, because we couldn't sweep it all up. You just had to sort of do it. Yeah. So it was almost like you chuck it all in, put his clothes in. Yeah, and you end up with this amazing... I mean, I th I come, some of the shows we did twice, like the, the hologram yeah, show. Okay. Yeah, we had to do that twice because it was... Because due to the nature of the space and, and the viewing angles, we had to make it, it was a bit smaller. Yeah. So it was a bit more intimate. So we could only have certain, you know, because you had to cater for X amount of people. Yeah. To watch the thing. It must have been um, more fun just doing them once, though. Well, yeah. yeah. And also ones you couldn't, like, re undo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like the robot dread. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you couldn't undo good. that one. Yeah. And so, I mean, that was amazing. I mean, there were loads of them. I mean, they were really, pretty much... 
always interesting. There were some that were a bit, you know, we sort of call them sort of place fillers. They were a bit like, they weren't, you know, when Lee didn't have a sort of, he had a collection that was strong, but it mm. wasn't a kind of, you know, something that he felt really... And do you think he always knew that? I think he kind yeah. of did, yeah. yeah I think he did. So there were a few shows where it was perhaps a bit less, you know, we did one in... Um, some old school with some pink lights and things, which, you know, it was, it was fine, but yeah. it wasn't, there was some amazing pieces in it, but it wasn't like, I don't think thematically he had such a strong conceptual, yeah. you know, like the chess show, for example, you yeah. know, then he had those pieces with the, the horses and then, yeah. for example, then he sort of made this chess thing and then we just, very, it's a very simple, so for me, it was a very simple um, thing because it's really just working out how did come in and And would you get involved with things, you know, say Michael Clark was doing the chore choreography, would you end up having to get involved with things like that? It's interesting just your relationship to things like the styling or the clothes or the choreography. Not, not insanely, no. I mean, I would, you know, to a point, but not mm. really, you know, what I do is I make physical or, or mm. digital spaces that, mm. that, that, that kind of work. Um, kind of physically, if that makes yeah. sense, you know, and I, I, I would totally get involved, but that was really Lee as being the creative director so of that brand, which would sort of, as it were, with his piece of work, yeah. you know, he would tie the pieces, if that mm. makes sense. Yeah, so for example, so. you know, Bailey Walsh would do a little film or John Maybury mm. or whatever, and then, you know, it would light it. I would physically try and make a space in which it would work, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah, so for sense. example, with the chess thing, you know, you try and, you know, I do drawings to try and help realize, because, you know, how does it, what is it? Is it, is mm. it a white cube? Is it black? You know, whatever, you know. So you try and work out the best way to present that idea. Mm. That was what I would do. So you wouldn't, yeah, so kind of, but not massively, not you know, massively. it's more like that was a sort of different. Different thing. Yeah. Tell me about working on Savage Beauty because you designed the exhibition um, at the Metropolitan mm. Museum with, um, you know, obviously mm. with Sam Gainsbury. That must have been the most amazing project to work on, but also to kind of see it all again. And how did you start out? What was? Well, that I mean, I mean, the reason why I think perhaps it was successful, I don't know. I mean, I think it's successful because his clothes are incredible, really. Mm. Um, is that what? because I'd got this history of working on all the shows. Yeah. And so, you know, knew them inside out, you know, drew them, designed, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. So what I really tried to do was just translate the experience of being in those shows, because there's very much an experience of yeah. being in them, as I'm sure, you know, you know, you know, there was the music was incredible, yeah. you know, and he worked very strongly with John, blah, blah, blah. You know, he would, you know, he was, got really involved in every aspect yeah. of it. So, so what we tried to do as much as possible was try and, give the spirit of the shows into, mm. the, into, the into the exhibition. So that was really, it was more like an exercise in, in that, I yeah. felt, rather than redesigning new stuff. Because, you know, there's so much um, quantity of work that Lee did. His yeah. output is incredible. He's, yeah. you know, he's, the amount of, it's just, as you'll see, and you know, yeah, we've got this big room where we just kind of, at one point, we sort of thought, well, how do we best show off this, you know, how do we best show off the oeuvre that he's, mm. he's done? And so we just thought, well, um, you know, why not use the sort of cabinet of curiosities kind of idea? Because, mm. you know, it's like the inside of Lee's brain. Was yeah. So he'd have the idea here, ding, 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 ding. And it's yeah. difficult to try and put that into, categorize it yeah. in a sense, because he would pluck an idea from so many different areas. Yeah, quite often yeah. really trashy, seedy yeah. ones and kind of really interesting ones. And, yeah. you know, he'd, and that was what made it interesting. And that's what I think, um, that's what was always interesting about it. He would never, he wouldn't, nothing was off limits. Yeah. You know, whether it was an episode of Friends or something, yeah. or, you know, The Green Mile or whatever, yeah. or um, Shawshank Redemption, whatever, Green yeah. Mile, I think, you know, you know, so nothing was off limits to mm. kind of take ideas and, 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 and rework and mm. mash up, mm. which is what is really interesting. In a, in a, you know, with his background of tailoring and stuff, and he makes incredible things. So there's a sort of real skillful craftsmanship to it all. Yeah. And um, that was so, so really, I think, I mean, for me, the more successful bits of Savage Beach is stuff that's really just reinterpreting kind of, if you like, his work. his work. So like yeah. the Voss box, which was a collaboration between a number of different people. Yeah. Um, you know, I just kind of 
rework that really yeah. and rather, rather we obviously can't do the box again so I just put that as a screen at the back so yeah. you hopefully get the experience that an audience would have had if you were seeing you know, it's the next mm. best thing mm. to being at one of the shows because that was the other weird thing about this, those shows is that obviously if it's a film you know you, it's supposed to be as a two-dimensional thing and you watch it and mm. then you can give it to you and you can watch it and whatever but they were like you know 400 people to see this yeah, incredible piece thing, of theater yeah. And that was it. Yeah. And that's kind of quite, that was quite weird. It's almost become know? folklore, you know, if you were there yeah. and you talk about it. And it's yeah. Like, so to try and let people into that is really I know. exciting. I know. And it's quite weird now to just sort of think, my God, you know, we did all those and we were just there. And it was, yeah, and they are sort of iconic, yeah, so iconic. moments. Um, but yeah, it was very, very weird mm. that because, you know, because they just, that was it. You just used to stick it in skip. Mm. I mean, yeah. you have those little films, but I think had we have probably known quite how yeah. amazing they not that we did, we all knew they were incredible. But and you we weren't knew like he was archiving incredible. the sets well, I or think, anything? Well, no, I think maybe, well, look, I would have had definitely, because he used to pay us, so we didn't yeah. used to get paid, we used to get paid a little bit of cash, but mostly in old clothes, I'd have definitely had more of them. Yeah, definitely. Had I have known. <laughs> I do have known, <laughs> that's very funny. You, know. you must be very proud to see it in London, though. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great to see it back in London. It's good to sit in London. I mean, we've done it, you know, it's the same show, essentially. There's a few extra bits and pieces, added mm. treats, you know, for, for the London, you know, and I think Kate has been involved. And um, so hopefully, you know, we've done him justice mm. um, again, hopefully. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, it was great doing the Savage Beauty thing, and you, but it was, it was kind of, I think, not that the expectations weren't high, but it wasn't like, and really, you know, the language of the shows was so strong. So it's mm. you know, put a little mini parent. We made a little mini hologram in there, which mm. kind of worked. And we, you know, and it was sort of you, know, so you take you elements from the shows and just what I did was take the elements of maybe three shows and put them together, mm. so that you then end up with something that has the essence of his aesthetic. Really, so you're almost trying to do it through his eyes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, mm. definitely. Because I think he's, you know, that's, you know, that's what's. Um, so strong about his work is that it has this incredibly, you know, it has this incredible sort of personality. You know, mm. it's a piece of his work. Yeah. You know, even if it's a bit of embroidery or something, it's mm. very um, unmistakably his. And I think his shows were his. And so I think you are all constantly, and I know that Sam is, and I am, and everybody involved is always trying to think, well, what would Lee think about this? Because quite often you would do drawing and you'd go, nah, it's way too boring or mm. something. He would, you know, he would go, no, 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 it's not working, you know, mm. it's not. So he wasn't, he wouldn't just go, yeah, that'll do, move on. He yeah. would like, you know, it was, he'd get frustrated because he couldn't articulate. And you know, my job was to try and help visually articulate mm. where he got to, um, if that makes sense. No, it does. You know. Well, I'm sure he'd be very proud of it. You know, hope so. Thank you so much. You're welcome.